today's text is one that um, I know that many of us have heard, or all of us have heard a number of times. It's from Psalms uh, chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Let us pray. <clears throat> Glorious God, we ask that your presence, your spirit continue to be with us and guide us so that your words might be spoken through this, your servant, and each of us will have our hearts open for the message that you have for us today. Amen. Now, as we all know, today's text is one of the most famous in the Bible. In fact, there are people who are not religious at all and wouldn't recognize nothing from the Bible, but would recognize this one chapter. Now, when we hear this chapter, we normally hear it at a memorial service or a funeral. Now, this psalm is one that is certainly one that provides comfort during times of difficulty. And so it makes sense that we share this when we are grieving. And of course, it ends with talking about spending eternity with God, also a means of comfort during those times of loss. Now, because it's been so often used as a primary reading in memorial services. I think for today's message, we're going to skip over those parts and focus on other important aspects of this passage. And so today we're gonna to look a little more closely than we might have thought about this passage over the years. Now, the Psalms were really songs. When Jesus lived, the Psalms were essentially a hymn book for the Jewish people. Now, any good Jew, and that included Jesus, of course, knew every one of the Psalms because they sang them all the time. And I think all of us can understand that when we sing something, we can memorize it much more easily, right? One of those good mnemonic devices. And those are tricks that we've learned in school or when we were going to have a test, right? <laughs> and we could think about catchy tunes. And as I was preparing the sermon, I remembered a catchy tune from my childhood that is still with me, you know, I don't know how many years later, 45 or so years later. And I bet that most of y'all will remember it too. Do you remember that old commercial from McDonald's about the Big Mac? Two all beef patties. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all go along with me. Special sauce, lettuce, pickles, cheese, onions, on a sesame seed bun, right? Mm -hmm. I can't remember my own name some days, right? But I can remember <laughs> that. So, <laughs> now, supposedly that is the catchiest jingle of all time. <laughs> now, all these wonderful songs from the Hebrew Bible or reportedly, reportedly written by King David are inspired by him. Now they were written over a couple centuries and so we know that some people wrote these beautiful songs in his honor. Now if we remember about King David, that he was a lowly shepherd in his youth. 
And this psalm highlights the image of God as a shepherd. Now today, in today's world, we're so removed from being shepherds, right? That we've romanticized this image of a shepherd. And um, it's not something that many people do for a career in this world and in our society. Um, and it's definitely, even if people keep sheep today, it's not something that it was a lot like it was in Palestine 3,000 years ago. Now, back when, uh, during the time of Jesus, too, and back when this psalm was written, being a shepherd was actually not that highly thought of. They tended to find people who weren't very strong or needed elsewhere to do um, some other job that would take a lot more strength. Now, remember that David was the youngest of several brothers. Now, he was kind of the scrawny kid brother we think about. While his big and strong brothers were running the family farm and then off fighting as soldiers for their people. So when David came to help his big brothers fight Goliath, remember everyone scoffed, laughed? Because he's just a scrawny kid brother who's a shepherd and that's all he's good for, all to do. And many people even thought shepherds weren't very bright, not just kind of physically small. Shepherds back in those times would live out in the fields with sheep. And while we might think of sheep being all cute and cuddly, right? Especially baby lambs, you know, we've seen lots of baby <laughs> animals, right? Um, but sheep tended to really smell. Right? <laughs> think about your favorite wool sweater when it gets wet. Right? That's what we look like. So, so shepherds back in this time period, they're not highly thought of. They don't smell well most of the time because they're living out in the fields with these sheep. And sheep weren't really the brightest animals either. No. Right? <laughs> Have y'all been around them, sir? Mm -hmm. Now, one of my famous, uh, I mean, one of the, um, there's a famous novel, it's one of my favorites from Thomas Hardy called Far From the Matting Crowd. Mm -hmm. so Y'all might have read it. It's been a couple different movie adaptations, a wonderful one a few years ago. And it begins with the ruin of this young farmer. He, um, a sheep at the edge of a herd goes off a cliff, it's because of this dog, but goes off and then all the sheep follow, right? Mm -hmm. And he loses his entire fortune. So sheep, in addition to all these things, they can't defend themselves. That's why a shepherd had to stay out in a field. He would have his crook or staff, and if a wolf came along, he would use the crook or slingshots to scare it away. And the crook also came in handy to help guide the sheep when they would start to go astray, and then the rest of them follow each other. He would hold it out as some kind of boundary to show them a better path to go. And so this psalm, when we're talking about the Good Shepherd, it's really about God, right? God is our shepherd. God has given up this throne-type lifestyle to come live out in the smelly dirt and the exposed elements with us, <laughs> right? And make no mistake, we are the smelly, not-too-bright sheep. <laughs> so. When God is our shepherd, God is here with us. God is in the grassy fields. God guides us along the right paths, even when we're trying to follow other sheep off a cliff or straight towards a wolf. And one other thing about this crook, you know, the, the rod or staff, it was never meant to hit sheep, right? It was only meant as a guide. I know many of us have heard that passage from Proverbs that says, spare the rod, spoil the child, and that's used as a justification for, for hitting a child. But this passage is really saying the rod helps guide them, helps set boundaries, a healthy way to go. 
So as a shepherd, God reaches out in love and gentle guidance. God doesn't want to harm us, to hurt us. God is out living here in the field with us and wants to care for us and protect us. God is always with us when we walk through the darkest valleys, when we've lost someone that we love, when we've, when we've been harmed or abused, when we aren't certain we can go on the next day, when bills overwhelm us, when we feel alone or alienated. God is our shepherd and is in all the midst of all of this with us. God will continue to guide us through difficult and painful and challenging times. Now we know it's not always easy to know or to feel that God is with us, but God is. Now the Psalm ends with a promise. Not only is God our shepherd always with us, but God also promises eternity. Today, let us give thanks for God, our shepherd, and let us pray that when we go forth in the world, that we can be a shepherd for others, reaching out in love and support and compassion, especially for those who are struggling with the dark places. Thanks be today for God, our shepherd. Amen. Amen.